this, this has to start with a question. Do you own a lot of CDs? Do you still buy CDs? I do. I still average two or three CDs a month. I own probably 3,000 CDs at this point. And, well, I'm reviewing today the Jay's Audio CDT2 Mark III Transport. It's an update of their CDT2 Mark II Transport. And lucky me, I have both the Mark II and the Mark III to compare against each other. And that's what's going to happen in this review. Now, the thing is, <laughs> this is all predicated on people who own a lot of CDs. And, and I think we're still actively buying CDs. It's not a dead format. Uh, I wouldn't call it healthy, but it's not dead. And if you're still into it and you want to make the most of your CD collection, uh, it's worth buying a really good transport. Let's talk a little bit about the price. The price is $2,498. It's a lot of money, but it is a stunning piece of industrial art. It is beautifully crafted. It weighs 33 pounds. It's just beyond solidly built. It's really impressive piece of work. Um, but there is a discount in place right now for audiophiliac viewers, and I will tell you the discounted price later on in this video. And also later on in this video, I will present the audiophiliac viewer system of the day. And this time it's from a woman. Remember a couple of days ago, I asked for female audiophiles to send me pictures. And this one, this one really is pretty special. And by the way, yes, the, this, the Mark III is $2,498, less a discount. But if that's out of reach, I really, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Cambridge CXC transport, which is currently $595. That really makes a difference. If you're currently using just a CD player or a DVD player as a transport, uh, and, you, and you do own a sizable collection of CDs, you should seriously consider upgrading to a transport. If you can't swing thousands of dollars for a transport, you should check out the CXC. I reviewed it. I think I was still at CNET at that point. I will link to that review in the description below this video because that's a really nice transport for a reasonable amount of money. But if you're a high-end person, the uh, Jay's Audio Transport is at a, literally at another level of build quality and sound quality. And as I said, I'm going to compare the Mark II to the Mark III. Now, when it was offered to me to do this review, I wasn't really sure that it was going to be worthwhile. Like, is this going to be kind of a subtle difference? And then it would, wasn't going to be worth talking about. But I was pretty surprised and happy that the difference was not subtle. Now, the other big news about the upgrade from two to three is that Jay's Audio is offering owners of the Mark II version uh, the ability to upgrade from two to three at home. It's basically a plug-in board. There's no soldering. You can do it yourself at home. The price of the upgrade board is $895. Now, one of the, the nice things is it does have uh, an HDMI slash I squared S output, and that does give you the best sound. Now, I was using uh, the Denifreps Terminator, not the Terminator Plus, and also the Mola Mola uh, Tambacu uh, as DAX for this review. And the Mola Mola does have an I squared S input, and it was compatible with this, the Jay's Audio Transport. Now, the Jay's Audio Transport's uh, I squared S output is not 100% compatible with every DAC out there that has I squared S input. I'll put up uh, a picture I took of the manual that shows you some play, uh, DACs that are compatible uh, and it is configurable. And there will be probably further information coming from Jay's Audio about which. DAX, the CDT Mark III, is compatible with. One of the other things that the upgrade does is you can output, instead of just 44.1 digital PCM, you can also output 176.4 PCM. 
I listened to it that way. I can't say I heard a significant difference when I was listening to 176.4 PCM. This is important. The, the laser mechanism in the J's transport in the previous one and this one is user replaceable. So if it fails, let's say in the field, meaning in your home, no worries, you're not going to send it back to China where the J's audio transport is made. They could just send you a new one, a replacement. It is a plug-in board, uh, costs $350, so you can just do it at home. No special skills are required. So that is extra cool. So no worries about at some point down the road the laser is going to fail or the tracking is going to get weird. They got you covered. They just send you a new laser. The rest of the system for the review is my standard reference system, the Pass Labs XP30 preamp, Pass Labs XA25 power amp, and of course the Klipsch Cornwall 4 speakers. The DAC, there were two DACs that were used, the Denifreps Terminator, not the Plus, just plain Terminator, and the Mola Mola Tembaku. <clears throat> and the connection between transport and the DAC was either I squared S or AES EBU, the XLR connectors. That's pretty much it. As for music, I'm sorry, I didn't use something that I've never used before. I've referred to this uh, CD recently. It's Dick Hyman. He's an amazing piano player. It's a big band recording. It's called Swing. It's, I just use it because it's such a good recording. And it served the purposes of listening to this, these two transports, Mark II and Mark III, so perfectly. And I'm switching between the two using I squared S. And to tell you the truth, as they say, it was like hearing the differences between two DACs. Because it was that great. Because it just had more room sound over the Mark III version. But going back to Mark II, the sound got more, well, it got smaller. I was hearing less room. The piano transients were less transient. The horns, the brass had less air to them, less bite, less energy. It sounded like everybody moved back from the microphones. Um, it sounded like they got. A, it sounded like the musicians were a little tired, basically. And when I went back to the Mark III, they they had more energy. They came back from a break and they were ready to do another take. We'll put it that way, right? But I was surprised, and I was like, really? And I'm going Mark II, Mark III, Mark II, because I literally was surprised by how much of the difference between the two, between the two transports I was hearing. Because it was like hearing the difference of a re one, one DAC to another, one really good DAC to an even better DAC. The next recording was Niels From, and it's, a, it's his solo album. It's called Solo. And so it really is all about dynamic shadings and, and again, room sound, but just the the touch, his touch on the keys, and it's just amazing because that difference between the two transports was just laid bare. And there's an intimacy to this recording since it's just a solo piano. And the scale of it was just smaller with the Mark II than the Mark III. It just took it down a notch or two. It's almost like it got louder. Now you can't really make things louder with a transport, right? It's just, it is what it is. It's just zero, it is, as they say, just zeros and ones. But there was more life to it coming off the Mark III than the Mark II. The, the piano, the music just breathed more coming off the Mark III, which is why I'm saying it was almost like listening to a different DAC, a better DAC. It was, it was kind of, it was really kind of surprising. Now, when I went between the AES input and the I squared S input, which, generally speaking, I never felt was like a big difference. In this case, the differences what I just described were up more significantly than they were in the past. The, the I squared S improvements were more so than than they used to be. So that was also kind of nice to hear. The last recording was this one. 
with David Johansson, formerly of the New York Dolls. But this is a Chesky session, live to two track, no processing, no dynamic range compression, great recording. I was there, it was done in a church in Manhattan. And you just get that sense of the air in the church, of, of being in the same room with the musicians as I was, because I spent some of that time of that session being in the church, not in the quote control room, which is like a room away from the church, away from the, where the musicians were. And that sense of the air itself moving as David was singing and the band was playing, and that separation of the instruments themselves. And I was hearing much more of that with the three than the two. Much more. Well, let's just say more. But it was kind of thrilling. The Mola Mola, which I will review soon, the Mola Mola Tambaku, is a much better DAC than the Terminator. It's also considerably more expensive than the Terminator. But I will have much more to say about Mola Mola Tambaku, well, probably in a month or less, I hope, something like that. Anyway, oh, so, yes, yeah, so I think this is, if you have an earlier version, well, the Mark II version of this transport, you should definitely spring for the $895 and get the upgrade board. Yes, I would strongly recommend doing that. It's not a subtle difference. That's not what I heard. That's all I can tell you. I did not hear a subtle difference. And it's, as I said, you don't need any skills. There's no soldering. It's just pop out the old board, pop in the new board, and you're good to go. That's what they tell me. I, as I said, I did not personally do it. So, oh, and then the price. So the regular price of the Jay's Audio CDD2 Mark III is $2,498. But for a limited time, for Audiophiliac viewers, the discounted price is $2,330. And I'm gonna put up on the screen the code that you enter to get the discounted price. I don't know how long that lasts, uh, just you'll just have to try it and find out. Anyway, this has been my review on the Jay's Audio CD2 Mark III Transport. And now it is time for the very first, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure, the very first female audiophiliac viewer system of the day. So this one comes from Rhea. She is in Portsmouth, England, and she has what I would call a very proper British system starting with a Riga P8 turntable and a Dynavector XX2 cartridge, a Riga Aria phono preamp, Riga Athos integrated amplifier, Riga Apollo CD player, and not a Riga streamer. No, it's a name ND52XS streamer. The speakers, check out those speakers. They're Spender D7.2s with Gaia IO acoustic feet. All the gear is sitting in a Atacama rack. So Rita's into headphones. She has Fostex Argon MK3s and Fostex T60RPs, both modified by Ryan at Mod House. Also Sennheiser Jubilee HD 580s and May's 99 Noirs. Headphone electronics include Nuon X8 Magic DAC and Nuon X7S headphone amp. Thanks, Rhea. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this channel. And by the way, give me a like. I, I keep hearing the algorithm rewards. <laughs> There's rewards for some reason or other for giving me a thumbs up or liking this or whatever it's called. So please give me a like every now and then if you think I deserve it. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, social media stuff is all, is all good. Uh, what else? Well, you could check out the Patreon, and that can be found at patreon.com slash audiophiliac. There's a link to that in the description. A lot of stuff going on in that description box, I admit. And including a list of the gear for the audiophiliac uh, viewer system of the day. There's usually, that's usually tucked down there as well. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. So once again, thank you for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.